Hey guys, this is Triggs, and today is going to be the first video of the tutorial series of how to create a professional YouTube background. So I promised you guys this tutorial series, so this is going to be the first part. It'll either be two or three parts. So I just want to go over what it's going to actually look like. So you can see here we got a nice grayscale style, and it looks really professional. It's got cool module effects, and it's got the nice um, light lines on the side. So I'm just going to zoom in. You can see a little bit closer. And so in the middle, we have the links. You have your name in the middle. You can put whatever you want. And um, you can just put these to your liking. So we have the different Skype, PayPal, email, Facebook, Twitter, website. And you can do whatever you want with those. So we have some gloss on the modules. And then we got some fading here. We're going to do some nice gradient styles on here. And then we have kind of this encased module style. So I hope you guys like this tutorial. And we're going to start off with doing the background effects and some of the basic module stuff. So open up your template you use. I'm going to have the download link in the description for the template I use. And you're just going to start by choosing a nice dark gray. And you're going to go to your paint bucket. And we're just going to paste that as the background. So that looks good. Now we're just going to zoom in. And we're going to see our modules here. And we're going to want to make those the same color as the background. Fill all those in. Okay, cool. Then go to your modules layer again, and then we're going to create a box around them. So make sure you can see how big it is. And then we're just going to drag over some rulers. If you don't have the rulers, you can go to view and click rulers. Then we're going to snap some rulers to the sides. Perfect. And then grab a darker gray that we reused for the background of the modules. And we're going to use our marquee tool to highlight that whole area. Drag it to the bottom. And then we're just going to paint bucket in a paint bucket in a color on a new layer. Okay. Now we're just going to drag it a little bit wider so we have some space on the side. And then just scroll up till you can see your center point. And we're just going to put it right to the center so it's all centered up. Alright, cool. Now we got that set. You can just hide your rulers. And then we'll move on to the next part, which is making the lines. So we're going to need white on our color palette, and then put this layer under the module layers and above the background. And we're just going to go to our line tool. And we're going to hold shift, make sure your weight is on one pixel. And we're going to drag it down to about that size. Then right click on the layer and rasterize it. And go over to your eraser tool. Set the size to 500. Make sure the mode is on brush. Opacity 100. And then this is what you're going to want to change. Usually your flow is at 100. Change that down to 50%. And we're just going to erase till you get these nice lines like this. Well, that looks good. And then we're going to rotate it by holding shift. Alright, perfect. Now, you can place these wherever you want. Um, the best place is kind of you want to start it from like the corner. So, start one. Usually I like to start from like the corner like this. And then you can always change the opacity. I like to vary up the opacity and how it looks. And then you're just going to control J the layer which duplicates it. And then we'll do one going into the module like this, and then we'll make that one like 50%. And you're just going to want to just vary it up so they look not, they don't look as like symmetrical. You can use your eraser to finely tune part of them like that. That looks really cool. So just bring the opacity down on that one to like 30. And then just go back to your other ones, and you can duplicate them. And now if you don't know how to duplicate, it's Control J, or I believe it's Command J on a Mac. And if you don't know how to do that, you can just go to the right click and then duplicate the layer. So I like to do about four on each side so the last one we'll do coming out of the module right there and we'll just erase a little bit of it. And then we're just going to want to do the same thing on the other side. So we'll duplicate this one, just bring it over and go for the kind of same effect. We'll have one up here and erase a little bit and then duplicate it 
bring it over to the side looks good we'll bring the opacity on that one up a little bit so a little bit of variation and then take another one you have from the other side drag it on over and we'll just do this one this one right here and I'm gonna bring that one up to 75 and then this erase a little bit now the erasing usually works the best if you do it right next to the center section that usually looks the best Then duplicate that one and then there's our fourth now bring the opacity down that one down to like 30 percent and that looks perfect so you zoom out you can see the style you have going now you can always change the placement of these and they really look better when they're zoomed in so if you think oh, it looks kind of weird you can just change it up and so that's it for the actual base background now we're just going to start with um, just the center of the modules and we're only going to focus on the center we're not going to focus on the actual sections so we're going to go into the layer styles put an outer glow on it change the color all the way to black change the blend mode to normal bring the opacity down to 60 percent put the size at 12 and that's all we're going to do for the drop shadow and then go to the inner glow set the color to white change it to normal opacity down to 5 and then the size up to 7. That gives it a nice subtle glow, makes it look more rounded. And we're going to leave that like that. And that's going to be all for this part. The next part's going to be focusing more on the actual channel sections and how to create the gloss. And um, after that, all we have to do is add in the links and all that. So this is looking really good. If you want to change anything, you can maybe just put some scan lines on the background. And you can just do that by putting a new pattern in and then just putting like something like that in. So that's it for this part. Stay tuned for the next part. That'll be up with the next three to four days. So thanks for watching. I hope you like this. And um, see you in the next video. See you later.